Hello everyone. Thanks for joining me at Olive City Homestead in Northern California. Kim here. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you about moving a fruit tree. Because sometimes, well, that's just what you have to do. And in my case, it's because, well, I want lemonade in the future. Now the ideal time to move a fruit tree is when it's dormant but sometimes that just doesn't work out. I didn't notice that my tree needed moving until after spring was over. In reality, it wouldn't have mattered much because it's a citrus tree that I moved, and here in Northern California anyway, in Zone 9B, it's a citrus fruit all year round pretty much. Still, if you have a choice, wait till the tree is dormant. In late fall, after the leaves have fallen, that's the best time to move a fruit tree. I didn't really feel I had a choice because my tree looked like it was going downhill fast. So I decided to take the risk and I went ahead and moved it at the beginning of June. Being a citrus, it still had leaves. However, it didn't have very many leaves because it was not doing well. Now, the next thing you need to consider when moving a fruit tree is prepping the new location. You wanna dig a hole wide enough and deep enough to accommodate the root ball of your fruit tree. So you have to look at the fruit tree, judge it, um, and decide how big does that hole need to be. Now, remember, it's always better to dig a bigger hole than a smaller one. <laughs> Much easier for you in the long run. Also, if you're gonna be adding any amendments to the hole before you plant the, new, the tree in the new spot, then get those ready, easy to hand. Although I must say, I did not add any amendments to my hole and from my research and from my experience, I have over 60 fruit and nut trees. I won't count my 100 olive trees because I didn't plant them, they're really old. Uh, but with my experience and my research, most trees actually would benefit from not adding amendments to the soil. They do better to just be planted in the native soil that they're going to need to grow in. This shouldn't be um, a big deal if you've already have the tree growing on your property because it should be used to your soil in any case. Now, after that new hole is dug, make sure you add water and make sure it drains well. The last thing you want is to put your fruit tree in this new hole and then have it have a drainage issue. <laughs> so just confirm that it drains properly. All right, so you're back at the fruit tree that desperately needs moving. But before you start digging around it, you need to do something else first. You need to prune it. That's right, you need to prune it because when you put it in the new hole, wherever your new spot's going to be that's gonna help this tree thrive like it's supposed to, you don't want the tree, which is already going to be going through transplant shock of some sort, to be struggling with too many branches and too many leaves. So now I didn't have this issue because my tree, well, first of all, it was a dwarf citrus, and secondly, it had so few leaves left at the point when I transplanted it. And if you do wait till the tree is dormant, you won't have to deal with the leaf issue. But still, you want to cut those branches back. You don't want them to be too long, spread out too wide. For one thing, it's gonna make it much more difficult to move the tree if it's too big. But secondly, it doesn't need all those branches. You want it to concentrate on root growth after you plant it, not on supplying tons of leaves to tons of long branches. So cut the branches back to the nodes where the new growth is gonna come from. Don't be shy about this. And if you're, you haven't pruned before, you're not sure what you're doing, just Google it, YouTube it, research it. You'll find plenty of videos on pruning. Come time for pruning around here, I'll probably do some uh, videos myself, but you can find plenty of information on that online. Okay, so pruning is done. Now it's time to dig. Don't be afraid of this, it's easy. You want to dig about 18 inches away from the trunk so as not to bother the feeder roots and if it's a nut tree, uh, you wouldn't be in danger of bothering its deep taproot either. When you dig, dig at a slight angle in toward the trunk, but not too much. As you work your way around the tree, you may discover that you hit what seems like a hard root. If you're 18 inches or 20 inches away from the trunk, this is not an issue. You just need to hit it harder going straight down to cut through it. I didn't have this issue with my tree. It wasn't old enough or big enough to uh, have such deep roots. You probably won't either. All right, so you've gotten all the way around the tree. Now you're gonna take that shovel and you're going to gently rock the root ball, first on one side of the circle that you've dug and then on the other, working your way around, rock that root ball back and forth gently. 
Don't do this by grabbing the trunk and trying to rock it by hand. That's really not good for the tree. Use the shovel gently all the way around. You should feel the root ball gently detach from the soil. You might discover there's one spot that you need to go back and cut through a few roots again, but it's, it's pretty basic. If you've done a good job going all the way around, this should be detached and ready to move. When you pull the root ball out of the ground, make sure you have something nearby like a, a wheelbarrow or a wagon cart, garden cart, so that you don't have to carry this by the trunk whatever distance you're moving it to. I mean, unless you're just a few feet away, but that's probably not likely. Once you have moved the tree to its new location, well, then it's easy. You just put it in the ground. You've already prepped the hole. You already filled it with water and let it drain, and that also made sure that the soil is wet, ready for the tree that's coming into it. You get that tree in there, you backfill it with your native soil. Make sure you don't fill it above the level that it was planted at before. You wanna keep the soil at the same level as it, the tree was planted before, that's important. Um, some people think it's extremely important to have the uh, grafting uh, juncture of the tree facing north. Um, this kind of, you know, is, People have differing opinions about it, that, put it that way. I always do, I mean, why not? It's not gonna hurt anything. The uh, theory behind it is that that graft is a wound of sorts and that facing it uh, away from the wind protects it more. The problem with that is, you know, depending on where you are, the wind can actually come from different directions as it does here in Northern California, westerly, and not often any at all actually. The other thing is though that by facing the graft to the north you are at least giving the tree uh, the least amount of direct sunlight and that can't hurt. The last step in moving a fruit tree is mulch and I highly recommend it. It really helps the tree retain water and that's going to be important during this process that will last basically a few months while it gets used to its new location. So when you add mulch, which I recommend wood chips as being the best mulch, and I'm not talking about um, wood chips that you buy at the store that are just pieces of wood, sometimes even color, no, no, no. I'm talking about wood chips that you either make yourself or get from an arborist, a tree arborist, so that they actually include the uh, chopped up leaves and twigs and, and all the matter of the tree. Very, very healthy for your fruit tree. As it breaks down into the soil, it provides nutrition for your fruit tree. So yes, add that mulch to your fruit tree if you'd like. And just make sure of one thing, you need to keep it three to four inches away from the trunk. That's really important so that you don't cause any kind of rot right at the trunk. Now here's an example of mulch, wood chip mulch, around my lemon tree now. This is the lemon tree after it's been moved, mulched, and given plenty of time to come back to life. And let's go into that aspect of this story now. So this lemon tree about one year ago had absolutely no leaves on it at all. <laughs> it actually was in my front yard um, and it just wasn't doing well there. I had tried all the tips I'd been given and I'd researched and just nothing seemed to work and I finally decided it just wasn't in the right place. It wasn't happy, clearly. It had, at the time I finally decided to move it as a last resort, it had maybe 20 leaves on the whole thing and they didn't look good. <laughs> so I moved it to my backyard and I picked a spot in absolute full sun. Before in my front yard, it was in full sun most of the day, but there were a couple of um, mulberry, non-fruiting mulberry trees nearby. They weren't huge, but they were enough to shade it shade this lemon tree for you know three or four hours a day i don't really think that should have made a big difference and and i'm not sure that it did you know with gardening when you have a problem and you do several things to rectify the problem sometimes you're not sure which factor was the the cause for the improvement <laughs> so i moved it here to full sun and um Again, no, it, all the leaves that were on it, the 15 or 20 leaves that were on it, fell off within the first few weeks. And I didn't know that it would transplant well because although it was still young, it was at least three or four years old. Um, so during the last year, what I've done for it um, is give it a lot of 
homemade compost and food scraps such as, I mean, very uh, targeted ones, coffee grounds, straight from my coffee machine, uh, broken eggshells, and um, some compost tea occasionally made from my collard and kale leaves mostly. And then in the last year, three or four times, I have given it uh, citrus fertilizer, organic citrus fertilizer. And you can see <laughs> it has gone from no leaves to lots of leaves and lots of lemons. It is still not tall. It's about three and a half feet tall. Um, but it has probably at the moment 75 lemons on it. And um, as you can see, there's more coming on. And as you can see, let's see, let me find some. There's new growth on it as well. For instance, right here, new growth coming out there. Um, and I, it's not perfect by any means. There are some leaves that don't look 100%, but I'm really, I'm really paying attention to it. And perhaps that is the key factor in the change. And in a lot of the uh, times that we manage to solve a gardening problem, it probably is a key factor, is that we start paying more attention. So because it is central to my garden and right by my walkway here, um, I see it all the time. It's front and center. And so I can't forget about it. <laughs> and so I'd say about within two or three months of transplanting it, I could tell it was coming back to life. It was rejuvenating. And within six months, it was full of leaves. And then and also starting to blossom. And I knew we were set. I mean, I don't want to get too confident and take things for granted. I never will. I still respond to it. If it looks a little yellow, I give it some coffee grounds. And you know, I know people who say that stuff doesn't really work. Uh, I've heard that, but it's worked for me. It really has. So, you know, I always say garden your way because gardening your way is what is going to make the difference in your microclimate, in your backyard. And in the end, in your production, whether it be fruits, vegetables, or just the production of, of satisfaction, which I certainly have gotten from um, bringing this lemon tree back to life. But the one tip I wanted to share with you today about this is, look here, I'm going to follow them up. Look at those two tall stalks, straight as anything. So these... Oh, get real close here. Look at those thorns. I have to be careful not to touch those. Okay, these are water stalks and they need to be cut off. I should have cut them off a week ago, but I wanted to uh, remember to film it so I could show you. These water stalks, let me get down there. You see there, they're both coming from the base of the plant, from the root stalk. They are sucking nutrition and they're not ever gonna do anything except produce growth and thorns. So they need to come off. Yes, they do. So that the tree can go back to doing what it's supposed to be doing, giving me lemons. I can't wait to make lemonade from these lemons. So I'm gonna cut these off right now. And I'll show you in a second. Oh my goodness, would you look at that. So there it is at the top, the two water shoots. Oh, and look, when we get down here, there's another branch of it coming out. And look at this. Aha, uh -huh. it's not two water shoots or three. It is one. One, oh, at least four and a half foot tall water shoot with some mega thorns on it that you don't want to mess with. Sucking nutrition and water from my lemon tree. Not anymore. Not anymore. That's going to get cut up and go in the compost. Don't let um, problems intimidate you. You know, ask around. I went to a citrus workshop at one of my favorite nurseries and got some ideas there. Not about this specific problem, but about bringing this tree back to life, actually. Um, and I had um, researched quite a bit and all of that led to success and it can lead to success for you too. 
I also wanted to point out, in case you were wondering, what in the world is that wood, those slices of logs under there? Well, you know, I had them lying around because I regularly cut down some uh, trees around here and I had wood chips brought in last year from a nearby fire where they had then cleared out the burned trees that were uh, still standing. So I had this stuff lying around and I thought, you know, that would make a good little stand to support some of these really heavy branches. I probably should have thinned out some of these lemons. <laughs> probably is probably not the right word. I probably definitely should have cleared out some, <laughs> thinned out some of these lemons, but I didn't. So I'm supporting the branches and uh, keeping them off the ground as well. So in addition to preventing them from breaking, I wanted to keep the fruit from um, getting bugs or wetness or anything like that. I mean, there are, a, it is a thick layer of wood chips down, which is also very protective, but this just adds another, um, like four or five inches to keep them off the ground and, and, and just more protection. So I'm looking forward to lemonade. Like I said, and when I make it, I'll be sure to bring you along and share the recipe. And if any of you have any lemonade recipes, perhaps even a, um, nice alcoholic drink I could make with these lemons. Hey, send them my way in the comments. I would love to try them out. And I have a lime tree nearby that's doing well. So I'll give you a glimpse of that before I leave you. And you know, you could send me some recipes I can use my limes for too. Right now, I use them in some cooking and in some, um, in margaritas, but anything else you have to share, I'd welcome your comments. So here's my lime tree, and as you can see, it's in a 15 gallon container. And as you can also see, Bermuda grass. I hesitate to say it because in my opinion, in my mind, in my reality, it is such a bad word, Bermuda grass, the bane of my existence. But this is the farthest it has spread um, from when I took it out. It, in the other side of my backyard, I had a ton of Bermuda grass when I moved here, and I've taken most of it out. Um, it, there are runners that have come to this point, and, and th this is the only point they're really at, as you can see. Well, there's a little bit right over there. This is the edge of it, you can see. Most of it's still dead from the summer heat. And these are just runners. The roots are behind me, but I need to clear this out. And the reason they're so green here is because I'm watering this tree. And they're like, oh, thank you. But yeah, that's on my list, my short list of projects to do. Uh, but this isn't a container because I decided to rejuvenate this lime tree as I rejuvenated that lemon tree. Um, and I decided that I would like to do them in two different ways. So this one was a lime tree that a friend had that was doing very poorly and they brought it to me in this container. And I decided to see if I could get it back to successful production in the container. Um, because technically a 15 gallon container is big enough for a, a small citrus tree. So I did it the same way I did the lemon tree. Coffee grounds, eggshells, and occasional, once every four months or so, uh, citrus tree fertilizer, organic citrus fertilizer. And I'd say the other um, factor that two other factors that helped were like with the lemon tree, um, full sun, and also, which meant that it's in my backyard in in um, the central location where I'm going to be always seeing it and noticing it. Yes, and then also, I think that even though I didn't mention it with my lemon tree, it holds true that that consistent um, observation of it triggered me to water it more consistently. And that's an interesting fact to me because in the research that I did on citrus, and you may have found this true as well, um, you're always told they don't need that much water and that one of the main problems is overwatering. Um, but I did not find that to be the case for me. For me, where I live, uh, we get really hot most of the time and we don't really get that cold. So for instance, this last month, mid July to mid August, we've had real record high temperatures at least in the last few years, record high. Uh, so it's been regularly between 100 and 115. 
and you might think, well, it looks pretty overcast there, not too sunny and intense heat. Well, yes, la yesterday and today have been the first um, overcast skies we've had since March, <laughs> maybe April, the most maybe we got a day or two in April, but we haven't had rain since March. Yesterday, it drizzled just slightly. And that was like a miracle in my book. But um, anyway, we get such hot weather so regularly that my citrus trees need water. Um, they've responded very well to lots of water. And um, this lime tree, as you can see, is full of limes. And it's also got new growth. And it's looking really healthy. Again, not perfect. I'm not after perfection, though. I'm after production and improvement and that's what I'm getting and you know I always talk about this is my simple living homestead and, and that's very true I try to keep things simple make it you know easy gardening because if it's not easy and if it's not simple people certainly I tend to get overwhelmed and even perhaps possibly give up and that's not what we want I certainly don't want to do that I love this life and I I love producing fruit and veggies and I don't want to give up so I have to make things simple and easy and guess what that works and I'm really excited about that so send me any recipes you have for limes I would love to hear what you have to say about that and any experience you have with citrus trees so that about sums up moving a fruit tree when it's in dire need of help. And I hope this video has shown you that you can bring a fruit tree that looks like it's on its last legs or last leaves, last branches, uh, and bring it back to life, bring it back to production as my lemon tree now is. I mean, I, I really, I was afraid my lemon tree wasn't going to make it. And I really, really want lemonade in the future. So, hey, that reminds me. You know how I ask for recipes for limes and lemons? Make sure you send me some varieties of lemonade that you like. All right, if you would enjoy more videos from me in the future that share easy gardening ideas for beginners and useful tips for a simple living homestead, well then be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll know whenever I upload new content. And remember, you can garden and live your way and create the life you want.